All right, thank you for uh, the delay while we move things around. Okay, uh, I'm Wahid Tanner, and I wanted to show you a unit test library that I wrote to help absolute beginners learn how to uh, program unit tests from the very beginning. So you can find everything that I'm gonna show you here on uh, the GitHub and uh, the demo code as well as on GitHub. Uh, before I begin, I want to just say that uh, a really cool part about being here at CPPCon is right before this presentation, I was talking to some other developers about this unit test library, and uh, we found out some ways that I can make it better. So that's just awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. So let's come down here. Okay, so we have a very simple program here that is just going to um, uh, break up a, a string into uh, some individual words, and I'm calling this method here called split string. Now split, um, I think I can, oh. Yeah, okay, it, it, it actually takes, I have to go through the menu each time to zoom like that. Um, the, the library is very simple, it just splits it up, but there's a bug in it. Now if we run it here, you can see that it all appears to run just fine. Uh, now this one I can zoom. So it splits up the, the words line by line and everything appears to be fine. Now, the next step that you'd want to do is try to put this in a unit test. So I created another project here called Split Tests, and we will make this one the active project here. And this is using a single header file unit test library. The interesting thing about it, it's very easy to use. You have a main.cpp that I have over here. And the main.cpp, you don't actually put a main or anything in it. You just define the, uh, the symbols that tells it that you want it to generate a main, and you just include the test.h file. Everything that you want to actually do, you put in these scenarios, and you would write it as if it was just a method, just a function. I'm calling them scenarios here. All you have to do is include the unit test file, and I'm including the header file of the string util. And if we build and run this, you can see what the output of this looks like. And let's zoom in a little bit on that. And you can see that it, it actually passed one test. Uh, everything uh, ran, no, no failures, and we're ready to go. Um, now this is using the happy case here of, you know, we've got a string with one, two, three. What if we wanted to uh, create a unit test that tested an empty string. So I've got that down here. And this is the benefit of unit tests. It gets you in the mindset of thinking slightly different about how you're using your routines, and this would come up. So now if we test this with an empty string for the input, let's build and run that. We can see here then let me zoom in a bit. We can see that uh, we had a failure and it, we see the expected value was one uh, on line 34 and the actual was zero. So if we come down here to line 34, we can see that we expected um, to actually get something and we didn't get anything. If we come over here to stringutil.cpp, and the bug is uh, that if we had no input in the source, we were just skipping it. So I want to add that condition in. So now we will actually check if we have an empty source, we'll go ahead and add that anyway. And if we build and run it now, we will see that both tests are going to pass. Let me zoom in a bit. Yeah, so we see that everything passed. The nice thing about this unit test library is it will divide your unit tests up into a hierarchy as you determine. So you can see that I've got a unit test here in an operation slash normal and an operation edge. So you can group your unit tests more at a higher order level, not just by which CPP file your unit tests appeared in. So it's a nice, a nice way to do that. Um, that is, um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you.